must be doing the right thing. Please you. Okay. <laughs> we'll take that. Okay. Uh, cloak and Dagger. Yes. Run away. Is cloak and Dagger. Run away is a crossover. Win. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's just say you won't be disappointed. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. I mean, it could I'll be cheeseburgers it. for all of us. Yeah. What's it like to kind of turn the page on the whole Roxxon story from last season and moving on to something brand new this season? Well, I think the Roxxon story is something that will always be there. Uh, evil comes in various ways. Uh, and anything that sort of touch back to the real world is always a good place for Marvel to be. Uh, so it may seem like the story is not about that, but I would always keep an eye out for those folks. Um, but this season is, is really exciting to us because it's now a chance for the audience to see our heroes really grow and decide we're going to be heroes. The, the first season is what's happened to us and what are we supposed to do about it? Right. Um, and these are all the wrongs that are in the world. Do we have the ability, the right, the, the stuff to be able to take it on? And this season sort of begins with them saying, we did it, we can, let's take it on. Uh, and then it gets slightly mayhemic. <laughs> <laughs> Very well put. Very well put. I, uh, speaking of last season, Tandy's story and Tyrone's story were very interconnected. They were they were like mirror images of each other. Correct. Showing their home lives, their free life, whatever. And I like the way they cut it together. It was really well done. Do you have a scheme? this season to show that kind of reflection of their lives, or if you didn't totally kind of abandon that and go at it a different No, no, no. I, the, the seasons feel very much a piece of an entire story that we're telling, um, but what you're going to get more this season uh, is them working side by side. So that will obviously change the visual style of, of what happens. So sometimes it may not be a juxtaposition of one and then the other. Sometimes it may be this is what they're doing, or they're doing the same goal, but they're going at it two different ways, and so that it's they're not different stories that will eventually cross over. They're two people that are starting together, and then Mayhemic will. <laughs> I think I'm trademarking that by the end of the day. Someone asked like him that. something about Mayhem. Hurry up. <laughs> you go for it. So tell us about Mayhem. Uh, you know, one would think that in a city that is as complicated as New Orleans is, that for two young heroes, having some kind of adult, I think mentor is too strong a word, but at least someone who can sort of guide them down the path of what's right and what's wrong. And in many ways, that's the world that Bridget O'Reilly provided for them. The, now that her life has been, let's say, complicated, uh, there's uh, there's not someone to turn to as much as someone that they're going to have to deal with, uh, and and that provides for great stuff, largely because that triangle of acting, which is uh, Liv and Aubrey and Emma, is just so much fun to watch uh, that uh, I think we'll get some good surprises at this season. You mentioned pieces of the storyline. Did you have like a final piece of the story that you did want to tell, that you have something in mind? You mean after a hundred episodes? <laughs> episodes. Uh, I mean, I, one of the things that's so exciting about working on, you know, some shows when you're working on them, you do have a sense that there's an ending to come. Uh, 
and that's the, where you want to go and that's where you want to be. Um, what's exciting is, is that because Joe Kasky began with them as kids, so that you really got to see the origin of where they are, and, and you don't have all the answers, but at least you are there at the beginning. What we like about it is, is that season two is extremely satisfying in terms of wrapping up a lot of questions, but you know us, we live in a world of to be continued, and so there'll, there'll be enough things that hopefully the audience and Freeform will grant us a season three and beyond, and uh, we've certainly been talking an awful lot about what the next adventure will be, uh, and I don't think folks will be disappointed with that either. How do you feel like Ty and Tandy's relationship is going to evolve throughout the season this year? One of the things about Cloak and Dagger is that they always were equals. One was not the sidekick to the other, one was not more powerful than the other. They, they were as close to a pair as you could find, really, in the Marvel Universe. Uh, and in the, in the same way that they are learning to be heroes, they are learning their powers. So it's not as though one has powers and the other one is trying to sort of catch up with that and how am I doing this and what's going on. You know, that's very much the kind of feeling that you get in watching Runaways. Is that they're, they're all at sort of different stages. It's almost like they're a, a basketball team that there's some stars and then there's some people that are just coming off the bench and they're figuring that out and that makes that drama. What makes the drama and the humor of Cloak and Dagger is is that Ty and Tandy are really there to support each other and just sort of watch each other's backs and you know it, it is that sort of partnership that you hope that you have with the person who is really in many ways responsible for your life and so uh, and hopefully for your joy uh, and I think that's also I always come back to Aubrey and, and Olivia because when you watch them, the affection that they have for each other, the, the, the chemistry that they have with each other is so authentic that it just makes it enjoyable to watch. You know how much they care about each other uh, as people and as professionals and, and as actors, um, that it's, it's delightful. And they're still... Uh, at least to me, young, and so <laughs> it, it, you know, being able to watch them grow and 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 hone their craft is something that's very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. So Thank much. you. Take Thank care, you, Jeff. Uh, April fourth. I forgot to plug it. Uh, we'll plug it for you. Get ready. In a second. Yes. Not ready yet. Not ready yet. Yes. How are you guys doing today? Awesome. Are you excited to be here? I'm very excited. No, he's like, it's too this, early. Is my, this is literally my favorite part of the con. Really? Like, really? I hate posing for pictures. I like talking to people who watch too much TV. Like, <laughs> oh, I watch it. I mean, it's all of us. Like, it's on your too TVR much right now. Oh, my TVR. Jesus. Um, I'm rewatching Friday Night Lights because it was oh, so good. Really? So good. And I'm rewatching Party Down. I liked, I really liked Russian Doll. I was surprised. Oh, yeah. Everyone really liked good. it. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we've been talking about. And Amala Hanna just turned me on to Larry David's daughter's webcast. I have you should watch series. the OA. I'm pitching that right now. Really? Yeah, that's OA really phenomenal. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, I okay. love Death and Robots. That's good. Is that good? Yeah, I've seen that. Stuff right. All right. All right. Great. Thank you guys. Good interview. <laughs> TV, oh, way, yeah. Okay, so what can you tell us about season two that will get us super excited coming out of season one? Um, I think if season one was the call to action, this is the baptism of fire. This is Tandy and Tyrone. Now that we've decided to be heroes, they start to have a debate about what kind of heroes they're going to be. And before they finish their first sentence, someone starts murdering people and they get thrown right into it. So that's season two. <laughs> how, did, how, did, how did the success of season one and the way the fans responded to season one influence how you approach season two? It was a little free. I mean, as the writers, you kind of you're always apprehensive. But like, will they get this? Will the actors be able to pull this off? And the two things we learned is we have 
the smartest fans in the world. All these things we thought we were hiding and that nobody would get, like, 15 people on Twitter the second after you did it. <laughs> it. And then the other thing, which is just a writer's dream, is how talented our actors were. You know, we cast Olivia and Aubrey. We knew they were really good. We knew they were beautiful. But every time we throw them into something, I keep going back to that phone call at the end of episode 107. It's literally two kids talking, and I cry all the time. It's about how she needs a friend and how they both understand each other. And I think that was the moment for me where I'm like, we just need to throw them more emotion at them. Things at them. We asked Olivia to pretty much become a, a ballerina in about a, a month and a half. And she trained, she did an amazing job. We asked Emma to be a martial artist, which is funny because Emma is a ballerina and Olivia was on Kicking It, so it, it just makes me seem mean. <laughs> but um, just expanding their portfolio. Right, exactly. But it was, I think in season two, when you know, like, like my running joke is Olivia Holt can do anything. Yeah, we'll just throw stuff at her. Aubrey did so many of his own stunts. Had to go to some really interesting places about his identity, and I think um, he just always rises to the occasion, so it's so much fun. Speaking of fun, how great has it been to actually bring Mayhem out this season? It is the best. I've always been a Mayhem fan, and I remember when we looked at Cloak and Dagger, I'm like, this is a little bit of gold if we get to do a second season. The opportunity to have an ally in season one turn into... I'm hesitant to say the word villain because when you see what she does, you'll probably be on her side the way we were um, until you realize how extreme she is. But um, it's just, it's a gift from um, the gods of Mantle and Hannigan, I guess. It's just like, it's its an amazing character. And then when you cast someone like Emma, you just want to throw more scenes at her and give her more to do. And this is a great opportunity to do that. Okay. Um, when you think about standalone episodes versus series arc episodes, do you lean into the arc or do you kind of like pepper? Because I would say that the last last season, the episode on the sh was like a tanker ship or wherever they were. That the was like the, right. the oil rig, right? Yep. By far my favorite episode. Right. Yep. And it felt a little standalone-ish, yeah. but it had so many elements of it that just blew my mind. It's funny. We we tried very hard. This one of the things this season, particularly because you have the training wheels off, you're not doing the origin story, it was you wanted every episode to have its own identity exactly like that. Like, my favorite's episode 8, just because it's so encapsulated, like, they both get their revenge. It's a little more typical, but it, when you watch this season, once we get into 3, 4, 5, 6, I think 6, 7, 8 are as unique an episode as the television show's ever had, and having them in a row and still building off each other is going to be so interesting. Episode 6, to so spoil it, has, I think, 12 versions of the same song as one of our characters goes through three versions of their life. And it's really, it, it reminds me of Seven, and then we follow it up with Episode Seven, which is even a little crazier. So you're gonna have a good year. How's the family dynamic gonna evolve this season for both of you? Um, I think the fun part of it is, you know, we spent all of season one with Tyrone kind of trying to get out from under his family. He'd yell about being smothered, he'd be in this gilded cage. And now he has beware of what you wish for. Because all of that's been taken away. And he's gonna realize, like, maybe I needed my mom to do this, maybe I needed my dad for this, and he gets a little bit lonely. And then Tandy gets the opposite. She's been cynical living by herself, but when she learns her mom was kind of heroic in protecting her, she has her back. And it's interesting, Tandy trying to be the good daughter, which is the opposite of last year. And she's going to have varying success because she's standing up. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you guys. You. The OA, what was the other one? Love Death Robots. Love Death Robots. Hey, you rock. 